Good morning everyone and welcome back to the channel. Thank you so very much for watching and if you're new here, click that subscribe button if you like the content. It really helps me out a lot. Now, in today's show or video or whatever you want to call it, we're going to go on a bit of a little trip. It's Sunday, the weather is beautiful outside and uh, I'm going to go visit my parents in the countryside to get some fruits, some vegetables, something they've stuff they've grown in the backyard. Now we're not gonna take help. He's covered up. He's sleeping for at the moment. We're actually gonna take Donnie and we'll see how the 2021 Symphony ST200 handles a long distance trip. Now, I'm really curious because I already have about uh, let's see how much contact on so we already have about uh, 3,100 kilometers done through the city and this is my first long distance trip on it let's see the seat how comfortable it is the position how comfortable it is I don't have a windscreen on him yet would have loved to it's coming in a couple of weeks I'll have a video probably probably on mounting it and the full review will be coming at 5,000 kilometers. So stick around for that if you're interested in the Symphony ST. But I'm gonna get him fueled up. We'll see. I'll also do a, a, a fuel consumption test and see how much fuel he drinks uh, on the wide open road. We're gonna probably be doing around 80, 90 kilometers an hour sustained speed. And that's about it for now. So let's get them fueled up and let's get on the road. Come on. Alrighty. So the trip I have in mind for today is gonna be almost 300 kilometers long. So a proper tour. 300 kilometers in a day is nothing to sneeze at. I'm also gonna be taking the small detour I took with Alp on the off-road sandy through the agricultural land. I wanna see, because when I rode Alp through there, I was really nervous of the soft sand and the way Alp handled the soft sand. And I really wanna see if it was the bike if it was Alps fault, the tires fault or my inexperience with a bike that large because I'm more used to something of this size I wanna, and I want to see if I'm more comfortable on that kind of surface with something like this then I'm gonna know that it's not Alps problem it's my problem because I'm not used to his size I'm not used to the way he handles off-road and I need to practice a lot more so this is going to be a test of my uh, off-roading abilities and I want to see where I am with uh, my off-roading abilities for now. I'm probably at the very low end, but I want to see just how low am I. Can I handle the soft sand with the platform I'm more used to? And I need to practice more on some on uh, a bike outside or is just sand really that bad? But let's get them fueled up. And let's get them out on the road because we have at least 124 kilometers to the off-road bit. Weather is beautiful. It's going to be a nice day riding. And I hope you enjoy the trip. Come on, let's go. And here we are, fueling time. It's fueling time. Alrighty, Pete. We'll 
stuff is done. Fuel tank of gas. Trip meter reset. We'll see what the fuel usage looks like. I'm expecting somewhere around 2.5. I've been getting between 3 and 3.5 in the city. I'm expecting about 2.5 uh, on the open road. But we'll see. I'm real curious to see how much fuel he drinks in the, on the open road. But let's get out of the city first. down here I now know that we have this gravel section we have some concrete slabs section and then about five or six kilometers of dirt road sand road something like that and I want to see the difference between riding out down that sandy bit and riding on I'm really curious to see the difference and if I'm better on Donnie because I'm used to such a platform Alp is still new to me now I'm not expecting Donnie to be just as comfortable as Alp was on these concrete slabs and boy did we have a windy ride down here even now it's extremely windy yep just as I sus suspected in terms of suspension softness Alf does have the upper hand on these concrete slabs Whoa there. you really just can't compare a normal city scooter with an off-road motorcycle and oh there uh, I could have waited you know I 
could have waited. Ah, the pile of manure still has a certain fragrance. Yes, it does. As I was saying, on the concrete slab, it's not nearly as comfortable as Alpha's. Basically, when I came with Alpha down here, I barely felt anything. It was like a magic carpet. Here, I'm getting shaken up a little bit. But it's nothing horrible. For the moment, he says it is just fine. If only this wind would die down. Two more kilometers to go, and we're at the sand. We'll see how that goes. And this is where the dirt section starts. Oh, oh boy. It's still just as sandy. I think help wasn't the problem. I'm the problem. It's still just as wallowy, but I'm more comfortable on something like... Like this scooter. It's digging in. Just as help was. But I'm, I'm more able to manhandle it properly. So yeah, I guess that wasn't the problem, I was. Now, let's have some fun on this dirt road. Although I do miss Alp suspension. Oh boy. Oh boy. Anything. I think it's softer than it was before. Now the trick is with sand like this is to keep the power on. At least that's what I, after I rolled out down here I started researching how to ride in sand. And everybody says the same thing. As soon as it gets soft, get the power on. Get that front wheel off the ground. Get the power on and stabilize the bike. Light grip on the handlebars and you should be just fine. With Alf I wasn't comfortable with doing that. With Donnie it's a different story. I'm more comfortable I'm more comfortable in letting it move around. Like here. Yeah. basically wallowing all over the place but I'm used to something of this size and it's quite comfortable to me so the gist of the matter is I need more off-road experience with Alp then I have to do a lot more off-roading with him to properly get into a rhythm like I am with Donnie. side or the other like 
now we are on top, not good on top. Boy, really soft here. Come on, Donnie. Now in terms of comfort, we have 140 kilometers done. I can say it's perfectly fine. What I'm not too happy with is that we only have, after 140 kilometers, we only have two bars of fuel left out of five. That's in line with the same fuel usage as it is in the city. Now we'll see the exact fuel consumption when we fill it up again. And we did have a very strong headwind on the way down here. But I don't know. I think it's still gonna be about three liters per hundred kilometers. Maybe if I rode slower, I did ride at about 80, 90 kilometers constantly. So maybe at a slower speed and with, uh, with no headwind, you could get it down below three. But at the moment, I don't think I'll be managing below three. So comfort good, fuel consumption, Good, but could have been better. I think maybe the one to five, the 125 is a little bit more economical on long distance trips. But for now, I'm enjoying my off-roading with Donnie. have some plowing get they're probably getting ready to drill it's September I think October is drilling season just show you what I have to deal with because people might not understand what kind of sand this is it's extremely fine as you can see it's almost like water look almost like super fine dirt that feels just like beach sand and the wind you can probably tell and this thing is extremely slippery and deep got done you dirty no matter he was due for a wash anyway on monday Something like this, you properly have to keep your speed up and have a light touch on the handlebars. This was horrible without because I was not used to the way he's, he handles. With Donnie, it's actually quite fun because I'm more used to the platform. I know when I'm reaching the limits, like here, really deep sand. I can actually have some fun because some liberties. Whoa there! So soft, so soft, bloody hell. Whoa, oh, okay. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> Just how soft is this? Whoa! Whoa there! Incredibly soft, Jesus! 
I'm almost getting stuck here. Whew. That was a workout. Definitely need sand tires. <laughs> Oh boy. All right, I'll catch you guys on the return leg after I pack everything and we'll be back on the road going home. Whoop, whoop. Come on, Danny. Woohoo! top box is full under seat storage is full we have a bag here and a bag there pretty packed up we have about 137 kilometers to go 152 already done still feeling good still feeling confident we're gonna go fill him up again and see how much fuel he used up until now and then we'll be heading on home because it's already five o'clock we have three more hours of sunlight the return leg should be around two hours so i should have plenty of sunlight left and we'll see how it goes but let's get some fuel in here for now. Saw that? So 3.44 So about 3 and a bit liters per 100 kilometers Not great, not terrible I would say it's decent I was expecting a bit lower but considering I didn't ride too economical And we had headwind it's acceptable. Now, back on the road. Let's head home. I'll catch you guys back at the apartment complex where we'll talk.
talk about this trip and how it was. Was it fun? Was it comfortable? We'll go into more detail. See you in a bit. Ah, the advantages of being on two wheels. Especially trying to enter a congested capital city on a Sunday evening after a nice road trip. Never gets old. Not sitting in traffic and just breathing all through. Never gets old. Nine more kilometers to go. And we're home. So how much is it? How, how long was this? So 3,404, we left at 109, that's 295 kilometers. This does it. And side. So a little recap, how was it? 295 kilometers on the Symphony SD, a day's riding. Well, not bad. I don't have any back aches. My legs are not cramped. Pretty good. Now, I am used to this platform. I've done tens of thousands of kilometers on the old ST, on this end, and 3000 on this ST. I'm used to the riding position, I'm used to its size, I'm used to its weight. So, for me, Considering I basically I had my legs here for the returning 140 kilometers because as you can see there was a bag where I was supposed to keep my legs and I had this bag pushing on my back. All in all, pretty comfortable. Would I prefer it on long distance compared to Alf over here? Well, no. If you have something like this, it's better for long distance. But if something like a Symphony ST, a 125 or a 200 is your only option, it is actually a pretty good tour. 80 to 90 kilometers an hour cruising speed. I wasn't impressed too much with the fuel consumption. 
around three liters three and a bit liters per hundred kilometers it's not bad i was hoping maybe in the 2.5 but maybe when it's a bit warmer and where when there isn't any headwind but for now it was good 3.3 3.4 liters per 100 kilometers that's a good uh, that's a decent fuel consumption considering i rode at about uh, constant 90 95 kilometers an hour maybe at 70 or 80 it would be more economical but i didn't want to spend all day on the road plus it feels real good at 90 real stable real nice if i would have had a windscreen it would have a lot better wind protection but all no a great ride a really really great ride and the off-road part well that just goes to show i need more sea time off-roading on alp because i was more comfortable through the sand on this than i was on alp and alp is a lot more capable on the off-road so this has been it for now like i said if you can afford something like a trans alp or a big adventure bike for long distance touring go for it if not if this is your only options don't worry you can tour on it no problem thank you so very much for watching and until next time take care out there and ride safe goodbye <laughs>